<laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Welcome, everyone, to Public Works Urban Beautification, June 3rd, 2021. Uh, our open session meeting and call to order. Any declarations of conflict of interest? I see none. I see none. Thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda. I believe the mayor, you had just just a, a quick, points. and this is just to follow up from uh, Councilor Yankoff's meeting on Monday with oh, the, yes. with, the, with the uh, with the with human uh, human resources and communications. Just want to repeat uh, uh, that we do have a commitment to put the signage up right. to the entrance points at the different entrance points right. to the city, and hopefully we're going to do it this year. Right. And uh, there's also talk about replacing the signs that indicate or delineate the old city from the rest of the city. Good. Okay. We're also looking at that signage. Okay. So that's all under one bullet point? Uh, that's, that's just the one, one. bullet point because okay. it, it was we discussed it at Councilor Yankoff's right. okay. committee meeting and uh, I okay. said that I repeat it here okay. just so we stay focused on it and get it done. Okay. Just looking for a timeline really. And, and yeah. we're also adding we were asking to ask, um, we, re we requested or made a request to add to the Grafton Street, Water Street Parkway signage where it has welcome. And it's the stone, it's the stone or the, I shouldn't say stone, but it's the fixed signage right at the east side of the bridge up uh, where we have the Charlottetown event, the ground. So we would add on to that Jalazi. What did you want to add on to your version? Jalazi, which is in, 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 it, it, it's consistent with our own, all the other signage. And that, that was all approved last year. This it was year. all approved. Yeah. Okay. And, and we're still talking about it. Okay. That's and the fine. second bullet, sir, you yeah. did get the email from Atlantic uh, Baptist. Yes. About uh, the need for a pathway going from Mount Everett Road to Maple Avenue and Centennial Drive? I think um, his email in particular was more to say that he was happy about getting that part of the street done. He didn't really go on to say, but the lady did, right? Yeah. But again, we can discuss that if you like. Yeah. yeah. Scott did send an email this morning. Yeah. So, but we can put that on. That's it. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, could sure. move by Councilor Duffy, second by Councilor Ramsey. Uh, adoption of the minutes. Uh, we have none to approve for this particular meeting. Uh, business arising from previous minutes. Uh, I don't know if there's anything anyone wants to bring up there. I don't see any. Okay, so we'll move right into reports. Uh, Mr. Adams, Enterprise Fleet Management, and Stephen Whitlock. Great. You guys are on the floor. Just on that point, Mr. Chair, as you know, the council had the presentation the other night. There seemed to be interest to move forward, we think. Uh, it was said that it comes back here first for a recommendation one way or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's here for the committee's di discussion on whether or not they wish to have us enter into a contract uh, with an enterprise uh, and uh, to have it under, their under the fleet operation. And I believe it's a 10-year contract that we're aiming for for the first um, go round. As I understand also, we can leave it at, at any time if we wish to do so. Uh, but right now, uh, we just want to know what's council's in the projections, you've seen the projected savings, if we did, uh, and also keep the fleet up to date and uh, able to achieve maximum value when uh, it is time to dispose of the So it's here for discussion, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, sure. yes. could I just add, I, I didn't get that same response the other night because there weren't a lot of questions asked. But Mr. Chair, I'd like to say that uh, my view is to buy local, stay local, and I'm not uh, supporting the enterprise uh, proposal uh, because I feel that we have uh, many of our dealers here, here in the Charlottetown area, and I, or, and on for that matter, Prince Edward Island, and I know it's going to be filtered through these dealerships, but um, I don't think that's the, the, the same game that we're playing right now with the, the dealerships here in Charlottetown or on the island, so I will not be supporting it. Just for the they are going to purchase or to... Uh, no, I understand that. The, the, uh, the but it's not, it's not the... S it, again, my point is it, they'll filter through the dealership in the local area, but it's not the same system that we have in place, which has been working for the last 100 years or 
how many years we've been purchasing vehicles, whether they were uh, hauled by horses or bulls. Now we use vehicles that have motorized operation. I'm of the opinion that I'm going to stick with what we're doing now. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. Your Worship, I, I don't know how you can say it's working because uh, we're spending, what were the numbers? They're fairly high. Our savings and, and our local dealerships were going to be involved in the exchange of money. I, I think everybody, I, I think everybody's a winner in this particular situation, including our local people here. So I, it's you know, we have to be, we have to be, we're stewards of the taxpayers' dollar. I, I, I would agree with you wholeheartedly oh, if our local folks were not getting uh, a piece of the action, but they are. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it's right. I mean, we're supposed to, as I say, be stewards. Of, so, uh, uh, I have I have an article here that uh, I gave Mr. Kelly was going to make copies of, uh, basically saying buy local. It sounds good, and I'm for it too. But when it comes down to using someone else's money that's been given to us as stewards of the taxpayer, I, I don't think I don't think we have the authority. To spend more money than required in order to get the, uh, the same service. So, Councillor Duffy, just a quick response to that. I know Councillor Ramsey has talked about could we not look at buying instead of going to the parking lot to the car lots and buying new vehicles, look at vehicles that might be two or three years old. With this this system, it's all new. Yeah. And 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 I don't and I think that was brought up uh, at the, at another committee. I think it was finance. Yeah. I think by the chair himself that said, like, are we looking at just new vehicles every year, every second year, every third year? I really think that we just have to be, and I think that's being good stewardship offer money if we look at, you know, if there's pre-used vehicles out there that we can purchase. So that's I, not, that wasn't in the mix, though. Mm -hmm. That's not the mix for this because no, it's not the as the as the as the vehicles age out, uh, they are replaced with new, and we do that now. So there's no change in that regard. So, but there is a hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars saving. I was going to believe. Uh, yeah. If if, if I if, if I may, guys, just for a minute, if, yeah. if I could, let's go to Adam. Oh, sure. Um, just give a, a brief presentation from Staff's viewpoint once again, just to clarify on yeah. what savings is there, um, and maybe get into that a little bit about what happens when our vehicles are ten years old, uh, what the return is, what we get out of it. Um, and what the loss would be versus, say, what the plan that Enterprise would want us to do. Uh, maybe I'll start off from a public work standpoint and then I'll keep it over to you, Stephen, to talk about the, the financial side of things there. But I guess the, the, the issue we currently have on, uh, from a public work standpoint is we do have a number of aging vehicles, uh, and over time, you know as the price of vehicles increase, our capital budgets had to increase. There's been a lot of pressure at our capital budget level to keep those new vehicle prices low, uh, or purchases. So we've had to spend significant money on the operational side to try to maintain our older fleet, um, which causes a number of issues. We have reliability issues in some of our older vehicles that are uh, do break down more often than they should. Um, repairs are getting more costly, just the economics of things where keeping our vehicles younger and newer, you, you save not only a, a, not only from a financial side of things, but there's also the, the labor side of things or the workload side of things. Um, like right now, uh, one vehicle I think went down this morning and we had a crew out for two hours that were, because we just don't have the reliability in the vehicles to, you know, if, if it was something simple to fix, a crew could be out for a couple hours so we fix their vehicle and then get them back out, out on the road. Um, and we've had vehicles break out on the road and we had to get them towed back in. So we've, there are also those operational issues that are caused by having an aging, older fleet. Um, now with this enterprise system, we were in on the original presentation of the staff. Um, we had a number of questions, same as council did, and we, uh, we were very impressed with what they had to say in the numbers. And we, we did like that this still does, there is still local involvement in it. Uh, the money does pass through the local dealership. Um, and so that was, we were happy to hear that. Um, and, you know, warranty work, everything goes right to them. So they still get all the, they'll actually get more work uh, because they'll be doing warranty work on these vehicles where 
now our half our fleet is you know well over half our fleet is well out of the warranty period so we do our own work or it goes to other private shops we don't typically take the dealership because they may be a little more expensive sometimes in fleet repair or they have a hard time you know dealerships are a little busier too than a small shop down the corner so you know i see that they'll actually get more work because they will be taking care of the warranty work in all these vehicles because that's where a lot of the cost savings are is we don't, as a city, don't pay for any of these breakdowns of these vehicles if they do have, they are covered under the warranty program. So that's some of the bigger costs or um, bigger items that we see that are going to be a benefit to uh, both uh, to staff and the, and the city as well. And, and maybe Stephen can talk about more of the financials and, and the long-term uh, savings that, that they're predicting for us. Okay, I think you covered most of the operational savings and mm -hmm. more costs mm -hmm. there of if we can be as we are. Um, so the biggest advantage to this is getting the equity out of the vehicles at the appropriate time. Right. That's where the biggest cost savings are coming from. Turning those vehicles over at the time where we can recoup a lot of the equity, reinvest it back into the city again. So the way this is structured financially, these are a month-to-month -month lease. They are still, will still be regarded as a capital expenditure on our side. We have amended the agreements to accommodate that. Originally they were going to be all flowing through operations, which right. would significantly bump our operational costs. Right to include all these lease payments. Um, we've amended the agreements to accommodate this to still keep it in capital. Um, we're just paying essentially a monthly lease fee the same as we're paying for the trucks we now rent mm -hmm. on a seasonal basis. So Steve, did you say it's a lease payment? It's, it's capital lease. But, but it's a lease? Yes. It's a lease so payment. currently when we buy them, it's a capital purchase? Yes. Okay. We, we finance the entire purchase up front. It's right. the stand right now. Right. We're just and then we go into long-term debt to finance right. it. Right. Um, so there has been a change on that side in the last couple of years as well. It does not make financial sense to go out for 30 year debt for a vehicle that's going to last for 5 to 10 years. So we continue to pay over that 30 years for that vehicle, even though we even may though not have on. <laughs> Previously we used to go out on for 5 year terms for short term debt, for these short term assets. Uh, that no longer happens. Everything is now financed through the long term of over 20, 25, 30 year debt. Uh, ends up costing a significant amount of money with interest on that initial that makes loan. Sense, yeah. So, again, there's another operational saving. There's still an interest component to these lease payments, but it's by no means as significant. It continues for the, as long as we hold that vehicle and it turns over, it rolls into the lease. So, um, and again, back to the operational side, it, it can cost us wages if we have downtown and staff. I mean, having vehicles towed, having maintenance done. Uh, so from the financial side, we're looking at savings based on these conservative estimates of 134000 a year if we run this 10-year term. And as Peter previously stated, we are not locked into this. We can get in for a couple of years if things don't happen to pan as we expect, then we can buy a new year. So um, just to interrupt for a second. So, to kind of combat what the mayor was saying, so I think if if I remember correctly, I think most dealerships don't make a lot of money on their sales. It's more on the, on the service and the maintenance side, right? And so, do you see what I'm saying? Like, so the dealerships should should be even happier with us because as long as I'm like Phil, as long as our maintenance is going to be done by our dealerships here in PEI and they're not being serviced off island. Um, the, so when we initially it acquired create the more vehicles, there's additional outfitting and stuff to be done. I'm not exactly sure where that occurs. I think it occurs off yeah. island. If we have to have... Well, that uh, happens in a lot of cases, yeah, yes. because we don't if have, we have, the, have to... But it's a general line. maintenance, so as far as oil changes and... and so any. we do have options there. We can contract with approved uh, maintenance people or companies in the city to have that done or we can do it in house. So the only caveat around that is that we have to maintain a database of enterprise as to when maintenance is done so that it's in compliance with the warranty programs and if we do any warranty work, we're not kicked out because we violated the maintenance agreement. So we do pay, sorry, we do, no, pay, no, 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 you go ahead, we do pay a fee yes. to maintain that database. Um, it's $10 a fee per vehicle. We pay that regardless. Um, if we do the maintenance in-house, then we will absorb that cost internally if we send it out. We pay a flat rate, I think it's around $67 per vehicle. The work kind of means, no matter change, tire rotations, general stuff like that. So, 
even if there's a large maintenance project that we don't do in house, send it out, we still only pay the sixteen dollars a month to Enterprise. So there could be significant maintenance savings there as well. That's all right, Mr. Chair. Just one of the things Mr. Hancock was right after me when I spoke. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, I, I, I seen your hand a second. I didn't. I just wanted to recognize Councilor Hancock. Okay, I'll let Lana go first. I, I did. I don't mind. No, no, yeah. no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Since your hand was on, I'm sorry. Would there be um, maintenance savings that would be attributable to the maintenance that If I'm just before you finish, it's, uh, maybe Scott can answer. But I think at this point, right now, there isn't any electric vehicles available. We're likely that for in work a minimum of five years before we can even get a, a large number of electric vehicles. So okay. if you look at the yeah. F 150, they're not looking yeah. at coming out until late next year. Um, and we would be a very small fish compared to some of the big companies that are trying to get their hands on electric vehicles. Okay. Um, so that's that's going to be the number one challenge is there's going to be quite a significant a significant uptake in the electric vehicle and then with only one major manufacturer doing it that's announcing it at the moment um, i yeah the, the i don't see us being able to even change a small portion of our fleet until five six years from, from down mm -hmm. down the road from now but just before Amanda finishes just but I think it's important that we carry on that conversation with them that, that and when the electric been, comes we, we, we want have to be been looking at those options yeah. behind and we are still looking at vehicle charge stations right. all that type of stuff so those uh, those uh, conversations are ongoing yeah. it's important it's, it's important that we keep you know the Charlton made a decision to, to you know to uh, to have a climate emergency when it comes to environment, right? So, mm -hmm. so it's important that we keep that at the front of our decision making. And uh, anyway, Lana, carry on. And then, um, so it says right in the in the proposal that um, enterprise um, buying local under the enterprise contract, all vehicles are sourced through local vendors. Mm -hmm. So it's just passing through. It's like when we bought our new best German Ford truck, it went through Ford. Ford didn't get anything. Farrell Ford didn't get anything. It just the passed through. It still makes a margin on the sale of the vehicle to the, to the city, although it's not likely as high as when we buy it. That's what they said. Yeah. yeah. So typically when we go to tender now, the local bidders bid on it. But from my understanding, I'm talking with a number of sales folks, any of those prices come from corporate. So corporate, their corporate head offices tell them what they can sell commercial, to a commercial entity like the city. Uh, or a corporation, sorry, like the city, they tell them the base rate that they're allowed to charge it to. And then they know because it's such a competitive mar market, there's only a very small markup on those that they make. Um, so uh, from my understanding with enterprise, those prices have already been predetermined. Um, there is that still that small markup that the local company gets. Um, and for them to do all their <coughs> all their work, um, you talk to the salespeople, they do not make a lot of money off selling to no. municipalities. Or no. They just don't. They look at getting the money off the warranty and the maintenance stuff. Uh, that's where they typically make their money. Yeah. Councilor Yankoff, they make it on the, uh, the, the, the change orders because some of our vehicles that we purchase, we have add-ons, we have steps. That's where they make the money, and Scott knows that. And and I think that, that, that should be an important part of the co co mm -hmm. conversation because I don't know if Enterprise can make those changes where uh, where they're distributing these vehicles from. So we'll have to make those changes yourself. So just remember, the add-ons, or where they make the the, the, the extra change, mm -hmm. you want to use that term. And would the add-ons be done locally? Some. It, it all depends on what the add-on is. Right. Um, like you look at, say, a dump box on one ton, the closest dealer that does them is Moncton. Right. Or Halifax, all our vehicles end up going there um, because there's only so many companies that do this work. Um, if they're putting on what we call the back rack and the light, it's usually done the local dealership does all the wiring and, and, and such. It just depends on how the local company is set up to do this work. So, Mr. Chair, that would be a constant, regardless of right. which way you go on the issue. Yeah, like tires and things that would yeah, all be. 
you have to done you know, snow plow gear onto a truck. Yeah. I think you know to get it done in Moncton. Yeah. Right. Moncton. Yeah. There's a few different yeah. Yeah. But that's back Regardless on of yeah. whether you go with Enterprise or you don't go there, that's a constant. Yeah. Like, regardless right. of okay. But Councilor Duffy, <coughs> on, on a tender last year with Summerside and Reliable, yeah. there was some add-ons or change orders that Reliable couldn't get to the that's same right. price. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And, and Mr. Adams knows that because a lot of our utility vehicles, whether they're water and wastewater, parks and recreation, mm -hmm. or public works, we right. require specialized additions to our equipment that I don't know how Enterprise would do it, but I'm sure there's an answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Council. No, good. You're good. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, uh, Councilor Ramey. Is it all done now? No, I think so. <laughs> best, you're saving the best to last. Yeah. <clears throat> Scott, can you give me approximately a number <clears throat> how old our oldest vehicles are right now? I have a two-part question here. Yeah, I know some, I know like for us, public work, I'm quite confident we have a couple 12-year-old vehicles. Okay. Uh, I know Parks and Rec does for sure. Yeah, they have. Yeah. yeah. Like our, our average fleet is well over, you know, it's, it's, it's not young by any means, you know, I would say we're at least average six or seven years old. No, we're seeing a lot of them on the street. Is it? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, yeah, average eight years, eight, over eight years is okay. the average. And this is for Steve. Uh, Steve, what do we do with our old inventory? Like, old. are we saddled with that? You've also we go with enterprise in the next <coughs> six months or a year or five years. Uh, uh, do you mean disposing of the old vehicles? Yes. No, enterprise takes them back and resells them on our behalf. Well, they sell them yes, on our they, behalf. They have a secondhand market that they take the vehicle back from us. Our lease ends. Yeah. We just roll that money to a new vehicle. Yeah. But you're talking about the vehicles we currently right. have. Right. 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 Exactly. We, 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 yeah. Like all our vehicles. So the current ones, I believe, the ones so that they start at a certain age group. The ones we currently own, we would probably have to dispose of those. Oh, ourselves. we have to ourselves. Yeah. Okay. But you don't get a whole lot for it once you no, get to be that age, right? We really need to dispose of some of my yeah. It just depends on a half ton yeah. truck. Like yeah. I know somebody that looked at a 2015 half ton truck. He was looking at getting it. It was forty thousand yeah. dollars. Like, yeah. I mean, half ton trucks you just can't get anymore. No. And, and just to go back to my old thing six years ago is why I kept saying, why don't we buy the, some of these used vehicles for our public works or parks or sewer and water? Because a lot of people go on a two-year lease, for example, and they'll trade every two years. Like we all know people who, who does that. And maybe, you know, you can get it a little cheaper, but that was, that was an old argument that I was always shot down on. Because it's, uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between 20 and 2022, 20, you know, the only I'm some vehicles are very great, great shape when they're in there. Sorry. So, no, you go ahead. You don't. Uh, um, you know. So, the only concern I see there is generally, I, I would think that when the dealership resells a used vehicle, there's a higher markup than there would be off of the new one. So, we're probably end up paying more for a second hand vehicle than we would to buy one out right new, given the buying power of this group. Um, these they've already done an RFP Canada wide with the dealership, so they have set pricing. Um, for us to be able to accomplish that based on our volume would be out of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. And then, if you're buying secondhand vehicles, you're buying vehicles that may run water within a year, um, your maintenance is going to be higher and then potential breakdowns. And, and we also do specific things to vehicles like rubber mats or rubber flooring, so we don't put carpet in them, things like that. Where if you get a secondhand vehicle, any work, it's a work truck. That's what we no, true. expect. Um, That's why all, all the second, all the vehicles in the secondhand market are typically not work trucks. They're just a family half ton. Um, so some of the things to deal with the suspension, things like that. They're not heavy duty. Um, uh, you know, we're we're likely causing more, or it's more of an issue for our staff to work with them. Um, and you're buying bells and whistles that you're not really not going to use, right? Well, we should be buying bells and whistles. For no, but it's a, a, like a used. Yeah. No, when you say a used truck, though, Councillor Ramsey, right? Yeah. Like, unfortunately, that lease truck is it's got air conditioning, mm -hmm. right? yeah. it's got yeah. you know tinted right. windows, yeah. and it's got stuff that we wouldn't really no. want. You know, no. so you're paying for stuff that you really wouldn't. But um, for my two cents worth, um, uh, we're in the customer service business, and we need reliable trucks and, and rigs and. Uh, and I think it's important that we, uh, you know, this is a chance to keep our fleet newer and spend less money and less maintenance. Um, you know, it's a win-win it's a for everybody, I think, including the taxpayers. So 
Um, but again, I'm just uh, I'm just speaking in my mind about, and uh, so I think what has to happen at this point, I guess we should. Uh, do we need a vote, Peter, or just a consensus? If you're part of council, you need to recommend. Well, with those. Or not go well, if this is going to finance first, isn't it? Yeah, we'll it has to go to finance. Next yeah, so we so still we need to do a vote. It would still be recommended to council. Right. So, right. So we'll need a motion then, one way or the other. Um, and a seconder, and then we'll go in, I guess. So, to move to finance, to move to finance, and, uh, and then on to council if, if it chooses I'll to move. Okay, I'll move second. by council MG and to take on staff's Just recommendation. One more quick discussion on the floor, right? In the motion, <laughs> yeah. discussion on the floor, the motion. we do. Okay, yeah. hey, like just one more Tim, but too. We all know people that are in the car dealerships, people we know, old yeah. friends, and all that stuff. Yeah. They do sales reps, for example, make where they make their money is off their youth vehicles. Yeah, I'm more than their new vehicles. It's, it's yeah. maintenance and stuff, yeah. That's yeah. Really, yeah. Because they might buy it for two thousand dollars and sell it for four or five thousand dollars. So I was told that by a lot of my dad. Yeah. So moving forward, we have a motion on the floor to recommend staff's recommendation to move the finance and uh, um, to council. Moved by Councilor Ramsey, seconded by Councilor Duffy. Just we do have a point of discussion. Just to close Mr. remarks, guys. I know this is my second time to speak to yep. it. So the warranty work. We know that whether it's sold at the local dealership or it's sold through enterprise, that that's where it goes back to. It goes back to yeah. That's that's it. That's a given. The hundred and eighty three thousand dollars saving. I think that's spread over ten years. That's per, per year. year. Per year. Oh, that's per year. Yeah. And we have in our last budget, uh, we're hiring more staff. We're building a new public works garage. We're planning to do a lot more work in house, correct? With more mechanics. So, you know, we're hiring more, but we're looking at, we're gonna reduce our work because we're buying new, buying, purchasing new vehicles with warranty that would be sent to the dealership, not to our own mechanics. So I, I just see a, a, a sort of opposite contrast there. And I, I, I look at the, when Steve says it with the capital lease, that we pay, we pay this over 30 years. But I think if you look at our capital debt, I think where are we at? 82 million, Steve? I mean, above that? Uh, Probably it's, 90. It's around there, yes. So if we take the percentage of our vehicles in that capital budget, it probably would be like 1%. If that. If that. So again, don't look at the significance of this long-term debt that we have to pay no. because we're, no. we're purchasing vehicles. Because the big debt is in the big projects. Okay? Yes, That's definitely. when you you build on to the wastewater treatment plant, or you build you build a new facility like the Simmons Aquaman. That's where the big debt is. And it's just good, it's, it's good to keep that in mind. So I, I have difficulty with it, and I know Councillor Duffy and I disagree with it. I enjoy the, the, the discussions that we have. It's, there's no personal no. vendetta or anything about it. I'm voting against it okay. because I, I'm, I'm a person of uh, stay local, buy local. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good, thank you. So, if I may um, chime just chime in a bit on that. So, the contrast part, uh, you spoke about, Mr. Mayor, uh, um, warranty work is warranty work, whether we have a garage and a shop to do it in or not. I mean, the warranty work still got to go to, to one of the dealerships, yeah. right? So, so um, but I don't think when we did, when we decide to put extra work into public works to, to do more work, I, I don't think it's necessarily on the half-ton trucks as much as it is plows and, and you know, uh, you know uh, spring breaks on the wing of a plow, uh, you know, we got to wait three days to get it done. No, now we can do it right away. So I think that's, I mean, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, in snow plow work and, and this type of thing in the winter months, uh, it's very frustrating you're getting calls from residents and, and you find out well why were they using a payload or several plot well uh, it broke down blah 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 and we know way it's in a grid somewhere in Geraldine so so this this is where just to kind of yeah, just yeah. to clear the air for me it's for a large fleet or yeah. specific fleet then. yeah but but anyway so uh we have a motion on the, oh sorry man did see you again she's so quiet yeah that's what it is yeah, yeah. It's it's like queen. a little worldly I know that when municipalities that they had um, put up as examples, but I didn't see any from Atlantic Canada. Um, do we know if they, if, if this, are there any other Atlantic Canadian maritime municipalities that have signed on 
to this um, fleet management um, system? Good question. Are you something that I can't answer right off the top of my head? I have to reach out to them. I know because they're running through source well, which is a volume loop of Ontario, uh, I would assume that's where they started investigating this market would be in the Ontario section with government entities. I don't know how long they've been reaching out to few areas of the Ontario right. It's something that could be Yeah, I'd be curious. I don't know if I'm comfortable to vote on it until I knew if there was uh, any other, um, you know, if there's some best practice out there in uh, other maritime municipalities and and um, and whether it truly ended up being a success rate. I mean, overall, the concept seems quite, quite, you know, um, advantageous to the city, but I'm still just a little bit hesitant unless somebody can shed some light on the other, any other um, municipalities that we could. A lot of the other larger municipalities, they they do it internally. They have been doing it primarily. I don't know if Enterprise has reached out to them and, and do it. Uh, but they're also set up much differently than we are. How, like Moncton, for instance, I always use the example, they act as a running car agency. So they have a fleet division. Each department pays so much per month to rent or lease the vehicle. And their fleet department does the maintenance on it. So they have an extremely large fleet department um, with a large park stores, they they have invested heavily, and it's a significant cost. They just, uh, I think they just built a new depot not that many years ago now, uh, but they have a lot of staff looking after this. Mm -hmm. uh, where right now, for our side, we only have one fleet, uh, one fleet superintendent, really, uh, who is trying to take the ball fit in two mechanics, where you look at these other places they have, seven, eight, nine, ten mechanics, and, and a whole team of fleet managers and, and supervisors uh, working behind them to monitor it, um, put these presentations, you know, watching when these vehicles should be released, um, all that stuff. Uh, where this essentially opens up a team to us to make sure to improve our fleet and our fleet operations. Um, so that's kind of where a lot of them have. They spend yearly on, on some of these costs. Like I say, I've known the Moncton folks for a while, so I, I am a little more familiar with their operations. And like I say, it's an extremely large, uh, large department, just sort of core fleet. So just as a quick yep. follow up for that, yep. so can I ask? Yes, you may. <laughs> sure. So you recommend that we proceed to finance with this, and you don't, you don't foresee any hiccups, any pushback um, from our anything. You, you see this as a Win -win. I see this as a win-win. I've talked to our staff. Uh, they were hesitant before the first presentation, but or for, before the staff presentation. But the answers that we got from Enterprise and the, and the documentation that we've seen, um, there's been a huge level of comfort with it. And we also see that we're not locking into anything. We can walk away at any given point if we are extremely unsatisfied with what we're going or which direction we're going with. Uh, uh, so. I, I think it is a win-win. The numbers do look very good. Uh, it helps refresh and, and keep our fleet up to a really high standard. Um, and like I say, our staff that look after fleet now, um, they're extremely busy just with fleet, but they also have other areas of, of work they're responsible for. This would help take a bit of a burden off them to focus on our large fleet, which op operationally, our large fleet is, you know, uh, you know, if we can't plow the roads in the winter, we are, who's getting the calls? Yeah. Everybody is in this room. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we don't get out and plant a flower bed, not the end of the world. But if we don't get out and plow our roads, if we don't get out and fix those potholes, which is our large fleet, and that's what we really, we focus, we focus our fleet manager on the large fleet and our mechanics, because those are really the workhorses of our fleet. And so we want to be able to free up that time so that they can focus on that uh, and bring that equipment, to keep that equipment operating at an extremely high level of resiliency. Thank you. All right. Well, with that information, I will I will support it to mm. send it along to finance. But would you still grab that information when you have a minute? If any other maritime municipalities, it might be useful. Yeah, it'd be good to, be good to know. Good question. Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. That's yeah. good. Yeah, just, be good to know. I just yeah. wanted to add one more item here as well. Sure. Um, during the staff presentation that Scott referred to, the initial one, uh, Richard McEwen and the utility staff mm -hmm. were involved in that as well, and they fully support moving ahead with this as well. Yeah. Uh, in so parks, right as well. 
Okay. 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 Well, that's good to know. Very good. So our all three departments are behind yeah. us. Yeah. And okay. so the other part of that could be go to Council W is that mm -hmm. the intent with the change over with the additional two mechanics was to start doing more work in house. So the big department <coughs> is already now contracted out. We'll bring that in, mm -hmm. and the five departments as well. So we're trying to get to a point where what we can take care of here, we will. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will help alleviate right. um, yeah. some of the congestion. Yeah. I think the. Uh, the big key, I think, is preventable maintenance. Yes, yes. Right? That's the big. Yeah. That's the big key word. I think. Quite a word for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I studied that one. <laughs> Councillor Duffy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I believe that during the presentation <laughs> here on Monday night, that uh, the gentleman that was speaking was referred a couple of times to, and, and, and uh, Your Worship, you'll remember this when we were in Surrey, uh, probably two years ago, maybe two years ago. Year. It was. They, they spoke, the deputy mayor, the deputy mayor chaired that, but there was a gentleman there from an, an FCM affiliation. Right, they, they had talking. set up one of these, what, what, what's was, the problem? It was uh, group purchasing. But it was a group purchasing, group, yes. Purchasing. Not, not this, this gentleman that spoke to us here, uh, he mentioned that organization. He, he's his mm -hmm. outfit is affiliated with uh, through FCM with that. Uh, purchase the buying so power, yeah. I, I think you know if he's if he's at that level cooperating with FCM or not guaranteed but affiliated with FCM I think we'd be fairly safe in, in going forward yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. any other anyway, any other discussion points before well, we go I, I, I remember that presentation. Yeah, I that think was, you're there, Atlanta, or Atlanta Atlanta was there, there and so yeah. was Councillor Tweel and I think uh, Councillor mm -hmm. Durant yeah. yeah I think we, we were all there yeah. at least five of us um, but the presentation was, I, didn't, I forgot about the connection that uh, they had with FCM. FCM. So, and, you know, and, and he mentioned that the other night. So just to clarify, Scott, you said win-win. Looking at the presentation here, is this light-duty trucks or are we looking also at the heavy-duty trucks? Light? So, so let's just clarify. No, no, but just let's clarify that. We don't use these light-duty trucks to plow our roads. We use the heavy duty trucks. And those heavy duty trucks are the ones that our mechanics work on. So just to clarify that, right. Councilor Yankow, yeah. yeah. is that what we're purchasing are not the heavy duty, no. which is a whole different market. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you have to understand because when you just talk about trucks, yeah. everybody thinks the one dinky, yeah. is it for everything? Yeah. It's not, the one dinky is, is broken down. Yeah. And I, Scott, could I just ask it for the wing wing or even Steve, did we reach out to our dealers and just, you know, or, 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 or I know it's live stream. Did we even look at that? Like, you know, um, we know it's going to be passing through the dealers, but we're looking at doing this because they are taxpayers. Yes. They own commercial property. They pay not the residential rate. They pay the commercial rate for property tax. Yeah. So we reached out to them. In, Probably not. I guess in, in what, no, Just to say, look, this is what we're looking at. Instead of going through a procurement department, which would be you and, and, and the finance people This upstairs. is still going through procurement. Like the, the RFP and everything is done on our behalf by Sourcewell. Right. This is how Enterprise came in through this as a successful bidder right. on that RFP. No, but, but if we didn't go this way, if we continue going status quo, procurement would be release the tender to the public, yes. they would be. <clears throat> so I'm just wondering, did we reach out to our local dealers to say, this is a system we're looking at? No, we didn't. And again, well, no, uh, but did you phone them or did Scott phone them? No, we did not. Okay, so I, I'm asking, I'm just no, trying to find, get an answer from the chief engineer. That's not what we do. So, I don't know. It, we, owe it, we owe it to our, the, the taxpayers, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, I, that's and I, I, that's but that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. And the question, did you? Did you? No, sir, no. Okay, so, so we, we, we have rate payers that pay commercial rates, and we're saying it's a win win for us. But I just want to leave it that. No, no, Mr. Kelly. Uh, that, I got my answer from Mr. Adams. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you. But, um, but they're being this, they'll, get part, they'll be part of this process. They'll be a, just like we do with our heavy duty trucks. When we bought our Sterling, it went. It was purchased in Burlington, Ontario. It came through Farewell Ford. They probably got a storage fee. So, just, just I know a little bit about the heavy duty side of it. Well, Thank uh, you, sir. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Are you ready for the question? Yeah, we're ready for the call. Question, question is oh. called. Okay. All those in favor of passing the uh, Enterprise Fleet Management proposal on to Finance and Council, put your hand up. That's the same. Those not in favor? Please have that recorded. 
The mayor is not in favor. Thank you. Three to one. So, Mr. Chair, you have to it, is, it is as much as it took 45 no, minutes for this article. I have to be at Spring Lake Sherwood School at 20 to 3. We're going to make it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to move on. And then you have to be at West Kent next week for a cross trip. Well, I, I multiplied 45 by 4. Yeah. I'm not going to make it. And I'm, and <laughs> these are good discussions. And I do have a job to go to. This is the length of I do have enough job. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to make a call. Okay, move on. I'm in with your own other job, not counting today. Yeah, I'm hiding the elbow at the moment. <laughs> Great George Street uh, uh, patio uh, encroachment uh, applications. Oh, sorry. The question that uh, I have proposed that I get a response to about other participants in the Can you? Would you like me to respond to everyone here via uh, emails? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That'd be great. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Thank you, Steve. Right. Appreciate it. Thank Good. Thanks for coming. Uh, no matter what Scott says, you're pretty good. Awesome. <laughs> no matter what Greg will wear. Thanks. <laughs> Didn't bother him. Okay, let's go. So this is kind of a, a bit of a unique one. Opportunities wouldn't be coming to committee, but I wanted to uh, bring everyone up to, up to speed on this item. Um, so. Typical patios in downtown core for restaurants end up in the parking spaces, but this is a bit of a unique area on Great George, uh, as there's a large grass area in front of the, this is the museum, so that's the province house, and this is the last building. Uh, I think there's an art museum here, or a, It's called the gallery. Uh, yes, the gallery, thank you. Yep. Yeah. So there is a cafe and bake shop in it now, and they are asking for permission from Public Works, because this is public right away, and we administer that to put a, uh, a raised, uh, or I guess a, a wood patio out here on this grass area, out in front of their building. Um, they wouldn't, it wouldn't impact, so we would uh, unfortunately have to uh, relocate the bench, but that's not too difficult at all. The light would stay where it is, they would just build a work around it, and they would also build around trees. So we've, we've spoken to um, uh, Todd, Todd down at uh, planning, and there's no issues with the 500 lot. Um, uh, or any, uh, any of those bylaws. Uh, uh, we spoke to Jessica over in Environment about trees and they were, uh, they spoke to the owners and very happy with how they're proposing to work around the trees. Uh, and uh, so next is the public works to make the final decision on uh, if we will permit them or not. Uh, because it's a bit unique spot and it's got a lot of historical uh, nature around this area, uh, my recommendation is we propose permitting them to do it for a one-year term uh, to review it and see um, how the public perceive it, how it works with the area, uh, if we have a lot of questions or comments about it, um, and then uh, review it next year to see if we would permit them year after year to reinstall the patio. So um, just a clarification the goose chair, how long are they putting it down for before they take it back up? So it would be the same as the downtown street uh, patio bylaw, uh, the ones that are in the park today. October, we come back up again? Yes, correct. They would come up and they would have to reinstate anything, any damage, and, and make sure it's safe for pedestrians and uh, uh, and our sidewalk, our snow removal equipment. So the grass area that may suffer damage? They it may suffer damage, well. yes, and they would be responsible for repair or replacement. Uh, or, you know, if we, if we decide next year to allow them to continue to do this, we may work, look at working with them and maybe it becomes a paper stone area instead of a raised platform or something of that nature. Um, again, this is a bit of a unique situation because of uh, the historical nature uh, of this area. And so I didn't want to give them uh, full approval just to go and put it in there. I wanted to bring it to committee. And, and, and it's just the one it. patio they're looking at, Scott, is one it? One patio, correct, in front of it. It impacts, um, so it's- Those two circles are right here in the diagram. Yes, yeah. Yep, those are the two trees, I believe. Um, yeah, so those two circles are the two trees, and I believe it's this tree here and that tree there are the ones that are impacted. Oh, no, sorry, it's the next two trees. This tree so and this tree are the two trees that are impacted. It's going right to the curb, Scott? goes right to the curb, but it does not impact parking, so parking will still be permitted on the so road. Somebody can open the curb door no yep. damage. And that's one thing we will work with them. They will have to set it back uh, a bit from the curb line just to make sure our door or that doors can open and exit the vehicle. So it's going in between the two trees? It's going around the two trees. So they will be building uh, their deck so that it in, uh, circles around the trees. So the trees will be kind of part of the installment, yeah. right. um, which would be quite nice. It gives a nice shade down there. Uh, yeah. So I think it would look quite 
quite beautiful. And, and, and it keeps going further up to the bench as well. It, it goes up to, so it impacts this bench here. Okay. We have to relocate that one. Sure. And it goes just beyond this tree here, okay. this second tree here, sorry, okay. is where it goes. So it's a good sized little patio. It, it is quite, quite a sized patio. Um, uh, all right. Right. I was yeah. standing in that area. I think it will. I think it will look we won't just lovely. I think. I yeah, think it will look quite nice. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's lovely. Yeah. And it's under. It's with the understanding that it's only started off just for this year. Just for the year. That's what we're proposed to them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just Are until they okay with that? With the hefty investment that they have? And to that's to build that's, that's one of the uh, and that's what we have to talk to them. But I didn't want to come. I didn't want to give them a whole bunch of hope about, I wanted to talk with the committee here first to see what we were all comfortable as, um, and then um, approach them with that. So, uh, Councilor Duffy, any comments? No, that's make? fine. <laughs> yeah. Councilor Randy, I don't do it. No, my only question is that as long as everyone knows that to start out, it's only going to be for the first year because mm -hmm. the world changes back and all that stuff. Yeah. I think. Uh, because, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, as Councilor Yankoff said too, it's a big investment to put a patio. Yeah. It is. Yeah. You know, it's thousands of dollars. That's why I'm hesitant to only let like, like have a year. Yeah. It just seems like it's thousands of dollars now. Yeah. And, I mean, the price of lumber is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the other way though. Now I hate to see our green space being covered up. Mm -hmm. like, we're known for our beautification and our, right. our greens yeah. and tree. And I, I hate. You know, I hope they're not going to nail anything in the trees. And no, that that's thing. one. Uh, and hang the lights and start hanging the lights off them. They're, they're not allowed to string the lights from the no. trees. Nothing. Nothing but, allowed to be attached to the trees. Yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, for this year, but I think overall, I think we should sit down and, and talk, not today, but, but I, I think we need to look at a, a, a policy for this. Like, we really... Uh, moving forward because I mean let's face it I mean people are spending lots of money on these decks and um, they're probably not gonna be too happy when they're told that you know that yeah. our, our, our yeah. COVID thing is over you can't have it anymore yeah. but so I think we need to really set it in stone uh, a little more clear you know that that you know because you have it now doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have them every That's year right. moving forward so yes Pay what else pays that uh, $600 per patio? Yes, yeah, so we'll look at that fee as well. Um, cool and see, we'll have to see how it's worded. That's the challenge. I think we can make the pay as part of the easement document oh. that. Everybody else has to pay $600 yeah. per patio. So yeah. Okay. Suits, they we'll all make sure that's part of the easement agreement. The other part, Mr. Chair, is uh, the grass mesh. So there is um, uh, a, a, a plasticized form that you put into the grass. It can be walked on, it can be sat on, but it still comes up green, um, and, but it will hold chairs or tables or whatever. Is that not a better way to go? It'll probably be just as cheap as what they're proposing here. Have they explored that option? I don't know. I don't even know. I, I know what product you're seeing, and I don't know, or you're talking about. I don't even know if anyone's ever used it over here. Because yeah. I know yeah. Councilor Yankoff brings up a good point that it's a little bit for one year, mm. but at least with the other side, it will continue to allow grass to grow up mm -hmm. uh, and also be able to be used by, mm. um, it's in their money, but it's, a, it, it's an expensive approach. Yeah, very expensive. Very expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. So the other thing, they're, they're paying the $600 fee similar to the other patios, but the difference with the other patios is, are they going to have to do an additional encroachment order as well? You're no. No, because they are encroaching on yes. the trees. Yes, so this one is different because it's not. It'll be an encroachment piece that they'll have to do, but that comes at a cost, and that's why that's just under one fee. Okay. Just like if they took a parking space, they're also encroaching that, and they okay. pay a fee for that as well. Right, okay. Okay. So, uh, any, other, any other questions or concerns? No? So, uh, I just hope that, uh, they, oh, sorry, Mr. Chair, no, I just hope ahead. that they realize it's a trial. Yes. And, and, and I keep going back because of mm -hmm. the price of everything nowadays. I know. Yeah. And, and like that's going to cost them a fair dollar. It could, yeah. So I, and I'm like the chair too, yeah. I hope they don't think it's there and it's there forever. No. Maybe, and if it works out, maybe the whole thing will be there forever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, let them know, be upfront with them, I guess. Yeah. It's one thing yeah. to cover oh, up. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. I'm it. Okay. Yeah. It's one thing to cover up asphalt, but it's another thing to cover up green space. Oh, yes. Green. But anyway, we'll work that next year. Um, so uh, we need to have a recommendation from Public Works whether to move forward with this uh, with this agreement for a one-year trial period uh, for an outdoor seating area. No, it's just.
here for information. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so we, we already right. have the ability to do it, but he thought so it just staff's recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Okay. Don't worry. I'm all both crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, skunk and raccoon removal. Oh, my Yeah. Uh, we're going to do engineering first. I want to do skunks. <laughs> So we just put this on the agenda. We had another resolution or a tender uh, RFP close, I guess I should say, and have re reviewed and supported. Uh, we had, uh, this is for Engineering Services 2 project, and it's the Victoria Park Roadway and Active Transportation Corridor. It's been a lot of chat about how can we improve that corridor um, along the waterfront to uh, make it multimodal and year round. Uh, so we went out for Engineering Services. We were received uh, five uh, submissions for that. Um, uh, as you can see, we scored it uh, based on our technical and financial scoring, and the high score, uh, and they were also the lowest bid on the project, uh, VXP, uh, for this. Uh, so we've worked with VXP in the past. Uh, we've had great success for them, and have no issue recommending for award for this work to them. So we moving for the recognition of the council. Yeah. Question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. question. So what is your plan down there, Scott? So to close right. it year round? So what the goal is we're working with Parks and Rec because we look after the roadway, Parks and Rec looks after Correct. everything else. The goal is to make it year round where we can have an active transportation lane um, and, and see how we can keep traffic flowing through the park as well at the same time. <coughs> um, so we have in the RP, they're proposing, they're gonna, they're gonna give us three different options of layouts, uh, what a cross section could look like across, throughout the park uh, along that roadway and how we can handle traffic flows while maintaining or improving parking um, and adding um, uh, you know, more spots for people to cycle and run and, and all that good stuff. But there's still gonna be two lane traffic. That's the goal, yes. Yeah, and, because and as of before in Parks Recreation, yeah. five years ago, I think Councilor Duck was on it, that we, uh, it's just a one, yeah. the former chair wanted to have it closed yeah. uh, year round, but there's just many emails being saying no, I'll open it, you know, so it's place first. And, and that infrastructure down there is, is aging, right. so this is a great time to come up with this plan for this area, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can start picking away and upgrading the, that infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Good. So. Right. Uh, okay, so we need a mover and a second. Well, a a second. <laughs> I'll move that we uh, move this on to council. And I'll shake it. Seconded by Councillor Ramsey. <laughs> Any more discussion? None? No. All those in favor? Yes. All those against? See none? Mr. Mayor, Jerry, if you could, um, if the mayor's addition of the signage, if you get that next, uh, and then Mount Everett Road, whatever he's talking about there. Uh, when it comes to the pastoral, I don't want to vacate, so if I can vacate the end piece, that'd be easier. Oh, okay, great. Right. Okay. You're getting all this information out of the house. So, oh, he added two things. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, right. Mr. Mayor. Okay, so that's, so uh, the engineering service has passed. Well, is she good there so far? Okay, so let's, uh, the two points of interest that the mayor had brought up, he wanted to add to the agenda. The one was on signage of, on at the entrances and uh, the addition of uh, words to the signage at the uh, Hillsborough Bridge. And I'll probably let Alana speak on that since you're more up to date than the rest of us. Well, we all, it was, it's There's already been There's always something approved. we passed, right? Yeah, it's already been approved. Yeah. It's, it's just, just a matter of time timeline. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's, it's, we're going on a second year. Yeah, that's right. We can't keep blaming everything on COVID. No, that's yeah. right. And so at the HR meeting, I did uh, text uh, Mitch Vazquez and say, when's it getting done? And please get done ASAP. Yeah. And staff are getting, become, uh, council becoming impatient yeah. uh, to get it done. So he's here to give something that's too when that will be done, Mr. Chair. So oh, I, I wish I had a more concrete timeline. Uh, just because the staffing changes automatically, uh, it, it did get, uh, it, we had one staff working on it in end of March and 1st of April. Uh, and then it kind of got put to the side, so we're back on it. So right now we have the design that you guys, uh, that HR committee did see. Um, we are gone out today, as of the end of the day today, we'll go out for our quotes to, for the manufacturing of the sign and installation. Um, and then I also have my engineering students reaching out to the uh, various uh, property owners because none of, the, none of the signs are currently on city land or city right away. Mm. Uh, four of the five entrance signs are on uh, provincial right away, so we need to um, get permission from them. So we're working with them. Uh, that contact has already been made this morning. 
Uh, and then the rainy one is the Upton Farmlands, so we need to work with them to update our sign as well. So that's the next big step. Uh, the problems one, four, and five, I don't see any issues at. It's just mostly going to be paperwork. The Upton Farms may be a little challenging, but uh, we'll work through that. So and did you? Did you say July 1st? Uh, again, it depends on the manufacturing side of things. We are waiting to hear back from them. Once they get us a quote, they're supposed to provide us a time frame how quickly they can do it. And you manufacturing these local? Yes. So uh, all the sign fan, uh, usually we reach out to three or four local sign fan manufacturers. So there's Sign City, there's Fast Signs, any of those companies that yep. want to qualify and do it. Uh, so we're getting a quote from them for the uh, manufacturing and installation of these pieces. So ASAP, right? Yeah, 100%. That's what we're working on. Okay. But so, Mr. Chair, this is not a, this is not an issue for uh, committee. This is an issue for for uh, operations. for uh, operations. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. But you know. Yeah. I but think anyways, just yeah. That, I, I think just as councilors, we, we mm -hmm. residents are asking because it's you know we're getting yeah. into tourist season mm -hmm. and okay. people are just looking. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's clear as mud now that, that the manager of public works has it on his agenda. Yeah. yeah. And we hope okay. to we hope to see something soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. Yeah, so the, there's been uh, a couple of emails sent from that area. Yeah. Um, um, I think one of them weren't aware that we were planning on uh, yeah. either sidewalk or pathway yeah. in that area. This year? Uh, yes, we have a budget for do half the road this year and the remaining half next year. So there's That's big, where the park is? Uh, no, it's where the Atlantic Baptist. Oh, Atlantic Baptist. Oh, Atlantic Atlantic Baptist. Baptist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and that's a good argument, you know, that uh, it's hard to take them out for a walk when there's no yeah, sidewalk. Yeah. So, okay. so, well, so they look for sidewalk, yeah. is that correct, Mr. And, sure? and, and uh, yes, they are. And well, uh, one of the biggest this. challenges on that one is going to be location. <clears throat> I know a lot of the uh, residents of the Atlantic Baptist uh, Seniors Care wanted on that side of the road. Mm. However, they have a substantial parking lot that has been grandfathered in that all the vehicles pull in and drive out over the sidewalk or right. where it would be. And from a safety standpoint, it was only a couple spots. We we're fine. We could work with it, but I think they accounted as like something like twenty or thirty. Yeah, they spots. Were, there's a long there's stretch. There's a long stretch, yeah. and my concern, especially with mobility issues, to have people out there on the sidewalk and interacting with those that many vehicles is a bit of concern. So, so we're likely looking at putting it on the north side, the opposite side right. of the home. So could we, well, we will have a crosswalk. Then across, yes. uh, like, yeah, yeah, some type of alert system yeah. there because yeah. they're a little slower getting across. Yeah, right? so we're so we're planning on a crosswalk yeah. for that area yeah. um, as well. Very good. Proper sign. And um, and of course, um, you know, some of the feedback we got was from the article where where I had kind of committed that we were uh, very much in favor of active transportation here mm -hmm. in the city and that. Uh, uh, you know, we had the conversation with the CNIB, and 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 uh, so this lady reached out thinking that well, you know, the elderly is quite important as well. So um, Scott did he, uh, answer her uh, today, uh, saying that you know uh, it's in the works. Uh, we can't do everything all at once, but uh, we plan on doing so much this year and so much yeah. moving forward. So and that's operational. Also. Yeah, yeah, it's operational. So so, but the, the mayor just wanted to brought up, so it's been brought up and answered, and uh, that's it. Okay. So. Uh, pest control service, Mr. Kelly, do you uh, want to excuse yourself <laughs> due to a somewhat of a conflict? conflict. Well, Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, the award of the Skunk and Raccoon Removal Services. Scott, I'll probably just pass this right over to you. Um, I will say, just from a council perspective, we are, we've been hearing there's been a fair amount of calls. and. Uh, we, uh, I've been directed to, uh, which you were aware, um, to uh, try and come up with a quick fix here yeah. right away um, before we deal with the whole bigger issue. So, mm -hmm. it's all yours. So, uh, yes, yeah, so as of right now for a quick fix, we're still trying to see if one of the providers will do it on a month to month. Still not getting any response at the moment. So, that's another phone call this afternoon. Uh, so, so, guess, uh, so, if, if um, uh, so we, are we just asking them to do it for one month, or can we, if 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 we can get a commitment for two or the three months or the, for the rest of the summer, is that something we're willing to look at? I don't think so. We have a we went through the tendering process right. here. Mm -hmm. We have a tender. We're right. looking really bad on this. Yep. We this is a ten thousand dollar a year contract, right. and we've been horsing around with it when, since when February. Yeah. This this doesn't make no. Sense. I agree with you hundred percent. So why are we dancing around? Why don't we just award the tender? 
I think the frustration lay around um, the inconsistencies in the uh, in the meeting when when it was um, found that the uh, company that was awarded it is, is not local and with Colvin they only have one yeah. person and right. one small so, satellite station that fell over right. to the phone. So, so therefore I don't know how them right. they could handle that right so, so what I'm so what my request here to today is is I think is council hasn't discussed that yet right oh, so okay. right we we moved it remember we we're going to discuss it tonight right. so I think we need to let that happen That's my but okay. but our concern today is how are we going to get the 200 phone calls looked after so we, we definitely have not had that many it might oh. be 20 but it has definitely right. not been 200 it may have been of the 20, one or two of them calling quite a few times. Right. There have been a few of those, right. um, and, and mostly upset that it hasn't been awarded. Right. Um, we can't understand that, and so we try to tell them. But uh, uh, so it has. I, I, from my understanding, I will double check with Marina and Wallace. Can I think can vouch? I don't think it's been anywhere near 200 right. calls. No, but you know. Uh, so, right, Mr. Chair, I'm with the 20 that can't understand why it hasn't been awarded. I mean, this is foolish. Uh, I, I understand what uh, Councilman Yankoff is saying, but that's not our responsibility. No. Our responsibility is to award the tender. How many people they have here to provide the service mm -hmm. is, is of no concern of ours. Well, it's as understood. long as the service is being provided as per the contract, that, that's what the yeah. contract is for. Right. So to dance around to say they live in Miramichi and they can't come over because of COVID and whatever, that is yeah. not our problem. It's not, a, it's not our call. That's um, our call. Right. If you find out that they cannot do the job, then right. they then you can take action. Am I correct with that part? Yeah, that's correct. Right. That we, statement. We can cancel the contract. It's the same with yeah. paid yeah. crew yeah. or same yeah. so as parks and recreation. We should have done that when the tender was open. Yeah. So unfortunately, the point where they're looking at opening the bridge in another right. few months. So at, at then as the, that time, then right. that's even out of the question. Right. Yeah. So. So again, no, just yeah. to get back, yeah. I understand that some of the other departments are having issues with this. It's not, it's not a public works issue as yeah. such. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, being a counselor and the rest of us representing mm -hmm. our constituents, uh, there's a concern out there that the, this process isn't being followed. Mm -hmm. uh, people are not getting their skunks removed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what are we going to do about it in the meantime? I guess that's the question. Well, I we're getting all after Monday night, aren't we? Well, yeah. well, they need a recommendation yeah. from this, uh, this well, committee. They don't need a recommendation? This is the home of this, this yes. program yes. as of now, yes. Yes. right? Well, it wasn't well, environmental, was it not? Well, right. it, it was environmental. It came over then it moved over here. That's well, right. Yeah. right, but it only came over to us because it was an issue. Um, we're, we're quite willing to say we'll work with whatever the tender process or whatever yeah. happened and, and move forward from there. But unfortunately, there's a bit of a snag. So public works, because it falls under public works, we need to deal with this uh, ASAP as far as trying to find someone to do this in the meantime till the two departments that are having issues can work out and, well, uh, now and council. I and, think it's no longer all about sustainability. I think the whole skunk yeah. rack boom control has it's, been... It's come to public it's, it's one it's in our terms of yeah. reference now. Yes, it's yes. our term of reference. Right, but the tender has been awarded. The tender has not been awarded. That's our problem. The only, we've awarded a portion of the work, and right. that is for the buildings. We've awarded that already right. uh, under public work. So it used to be a, a joint tender between two departments, public works and environment sustainability. Right. But now that the raccoon uh, and skunk trapping has come to public works, it's uh, solely a public works tender. And I understand that it's back here. It's under uh, mm -hmm. public works. But it was under environmental, am I correct? That's correct. Right. And, yeah. and so what was their, rec was their recommendation not to go with no, their recommendation was to go with uh, uh, rent to kill. Correct. So, right. So all of a sudden, it went off the rails after that. No, it yeah. didn't. It didn't go off the rails. It never moved. That's the problem. It still never moved. Oh. That's the recommendation that uh, that environment and sustainability came forward with, and finance had a problem with it. And to my way of thinking, and I don't even know. Yeah, people. but you and I are on finance. I know we're on finance, but it's not finance's responsibility to start. Uh, taking the operational aspect of the tender, of any tender, their responsibility is in the monitoring to make sure there's a budget allocation mm -hmm. for this service, there's money in the budget, and there's enough money to for to pay the forecasted uh, amounts over the term of the contract. We're not, uh, yourself and myself and Councillor Rivard and Councillor, uh, uh, and, and His Worship and Councillor Cody, we're not supposed to be experts on no. who's the best on 
killing skunks or ca capturing skunks or whatever. It's, it's an administrative function of finance. It's an operational function of the standing committee that right. had it, which was the environment and sustainability, and now who has it, which is this committee, Public Works. So I don't see what the big deal is. No, it's true, finance. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Say, is the money there? Is that what this money is? Look, I can see an issue with it back in the day. Move on. Because otherwise, if we're doing the if finance is doing the operational aspect of life, right. we must have just set move it out of our terms of reference, public works, on to finance. It's it's okay. It's kind of like we wait, so we have to wait till Monday night. To, is that what we're saying? Well, you should have a recommendation from this council mm -hmm. of what you're thinking is because if you don't, they're going to say send it back. Where's the recommendation for public works? And we're going to have to say um, we don't the have other one. option. Uh, that I was looking into a lot of other municipalities and their new best practice is that it's not a service that they offer automatically anymore. Instead what they do is um, the individual resident would have done who, with whomever they choose to use to remove that and then the city, they would, they would send in their receipts and the city would reimburse them a portion. That's how the municip other municipalities now are doing it. True. So that sense, might too. be why we should have a further yeah. discussion with council That's on a good point. on how that would look, what that would look like. And that may benefit some residents because what I've heard has happened in the past. So our typically we have so many traps, and a trap gets set in one person's backyard for only a week. That's it, and then it gets removed. So if you didn't get anything in that week, then you and you call back again, you're bumped to the bottom line until you get it again. Yeah. Whereas if you, as a homeowner, want to keep it there for two weeks, well, you work that out with the uh, pest control company, and then we still only, you know, we set that maximum that we will pay, then we can set that maximum. That we but that that's a payment issue. That's a payment issue. We're looking up for, we're we're not we're looking for a certain how to yeah. pay the bill. We're looking for who to provide the service. That's where we're stuck. At. Well, yeah. All right, so moving forward for today, it's awful hard for us to, I mean, the, there was an, uh, there was a, an RFP awarded. No, it wasn't though. It was well, it was from that department. From the standing committee, yes. Right, from the standing committee. Yeah. And it's gone to finance, and finance is saying, wait a minute, they have an issue with it. And is I that, don't is know that, what their issue is. Uh, yeah. No, finance did not have an issue, if I recall. We were asked if we could send it back to environmental because some of those people were are still on environmental. Am I correct? Councilor Rivera and Councilor in the mayor, or are they, do they sit on environmental? Yes. And I thought that they were going to send it back. This was two or three months ago, as you say, Councilor Duffy. But they sent it back and let them hash it out. No, they, they and didn't. then turn around and end up here. But Councilor Ramsey, they had a recommendation. There was nothing to hash out. The hashing had been done. Yeah, I mean, but when it got to finance, yeah, yes, yeah, so but one councillor said that's probably. that he wants to go back and, and said uh, change the provider, yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. And I don't know, you, you, and like I'm like you, it's been going on too long. So you, you award it or you don't award. So okay, let's put it this way: it's hard for us to get in the middle of that, right? But in the meantime, Scott, can we, with this idea of Atlanta hit, is there any way that we could look at that in a, in a quick? Uh, you know, how could we? I, I think two options can happen. I, I think the best one is wait to see what comes from Monday. I'd hate to try to, by the time I get a hold of with your provider day. and one of them agrees to do it, you know, that could be a couple of days until we finalize that. And then Monday we do decide to award it if that's what council's decision. Um, so I think maybe it might be best if we wait until Monday until we see what where council is. If council says award, then that takes everything. Uh, away from us and it's pretty smooth yeah. sailing. We can likely have the, the provider PO down up first thing next morning yeah. and, and get them uh, sure. okay. get but, the boots on the ground. Okay. But if okay. not, then we can look at either A, doing a short term gap where we will commit to maybe a two month period. That may entice the uh, one or two of the right. providers um, to enter okay. into a two month agreement with us. The, um, okay, so. But that's, that's ignoring the the uh, tender that went out and was doing see the problem is the problem we have we even have a legal opinion uh, yeah, with this with this uh, tender that basically says uh, that the solicitor said in order to uh, uh, to to consider a criteria all, all the items that you're going to uh, 
to match against the criteria. That criteria has to have all the 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 touch the touchstone stones type of thing. And uh, where the company presently is located is not one of those. Mm -hmm. But an individual is using that as the reason not to award the winning uh, tenure to okay. Okay. So it's let's just, wait to Monday. But Scott, one yeah. question. Yeah. So you speak with environment um, uh, manager Ramon right. Ramon, and um, I think I guess I'm trying to find the words. So Public Works, mm -hmm. if, if you're okay with this, mm -hmm. will recommend that we follow the process that's already been right. put in place. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the fair? That's, that's fair. Right? Yeah. Which yeah, which, which and, scoring that and, and move on. Right. And if council decides Monday night to make a change, then that's again we're back to square one again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How about that, Mike? Yeah. Sure. Good. Yeah. Alana, okay with that? No, but you guys. No, 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 speak, speak your mind. I like to, like, what, what, what do you think? There's just been so much splash around this that right. it will be good to get it back to council for discussion. Right. So right. that's where it's going to council, that's great. Yeah. I'm good with it going to but council. I think count, but I think council is going to say, well, where's public works on? Right. And I'm just saying, we're, we want to follow a process. Whatever's taken place so far is good with us, which includes the council talking about it on Monday night. Because I don't think the proper process was followed. You don't think? Okay. I don't think proper process was okay. followed. I think that questions were asked and questions were answered okay. based on assumptions and later found out that those assumptions right. were correct. And that's, it's important that Ramona uh, comes on that's Monday right. night. Because, right? yeah. so yeah. I mean, it's yeah. kind of hard for us to get in the middle of this one. It's, you know, yeah. it's another committee's and already been warded in contracts and we're trying to ward. The thing that concerned me is that questions were asked and answered to later find out that the, answer, the questions were answered Okay. So that to me could easily have merged or changed the way that that committee um, supported. Supported that. that, that yeah. Okay. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna again. We'll just for today's purpose. For today's purpose, we're just going to uh, say that we're following the process of of uh, of. Uh, of you know, you say that because that's on the agenda for Monday night. It's on. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're, but they'll be asking for the committee standing committee's recommendation. That's what they. That's what they've said. That's what finance is saying. Well, I think the easy way to say it is, is that we're not going to interfere with the process that's going to take place moving forward, and that is council's discussion. We're, just, we're not looking very good on this. We're not. We're, we're not. Overall, it's kind of funny. Yeah. I know where the fault lies. Yeah. So keep it to myself. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, guys, on the new business? Nope. All I need now is a motion. Right here. Okay. Good. Moved by <laughs> Councilor Delphi, second by Councilor Yankoff this time. Oh, you never seen hands go up so quickly. <laughs>